Bowman here from BW1.com. I'm going to give you my review of the AT&T Galaxy S2. AT&T Galaxy S2 holds closest to the original design of the international version of the Samsung Galaxy S2 with the 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display, 2 megapixel front facing camera, there's also LED notifications here on the side. On the bottom, instead of having the physical button that the international version has, instead has um, touch sensitive buttons here at the bottom for menu, home, back and search. Here on this side you have your volume button, this side you have the power, on the bottom you have your micro USB port, at the top here you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. On the back you do have an 8 megapixel camera with LED flash. You can check out the video that we uploaded with using the camera. We actually did it in a bit of a different environment. We decided to do it when it was a little rainy and gloomy outside to see how it worked. And it worked pretty decently. Um, all the Galaxy S2s pretty much have the same type of camera with 8 megapixels flash and um, 1080p video capture. So you can also check out the Epic 4G Touch um, camera test as well too to see how it kind of works during the day and stuff like that. All right, you have this nice little sort of battery bay door back here to sort of kind of mesh um, finish here. And we'll open this up here and reveal the SIM card. Your micro SD card slot there isn't anything in the micro SD card slot, but it does have 16 gigabytes of inbuilt storage, built in storage rather. And you have a 1650 milliamp hour battery. All right, I'll snap this piece back on. It does have a 1.2 gigahertz Samsung Exynos process processor. That's a dual core processor from Samsung. You also have Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, GPS, and this does support HSPA Plus 4G speed for AT&T. So we'll go ahead and turn this on here. It is running Android 2.3 Gingerbread on it, and it, this does have a security flaw that we saw earlier. As you can see, there was a lock pattern on there. And all I had to do was wait for it to shut off and then turn it back on again and then the lock pattern is no longer there hopefully they're going to be sending out a patch to update that we'll go ahead and head home here and it's running TouchWiz on top of it here it's a lot of stuff that we've seen similar before in the Epic 4G Touch um, one thing that's cool here is that you can actually swipe all the way through on the Samsung, on the Epic Sprint one rather you couldn't just keep going like this it would stop at one end or the other between the desktops here you can also go through your desktops like this as well too. You can see there, all fancy stuff. That's nice little cool animations. All right, we're gonna head back here. We're gonna open up the Task Manager application. You can see here where you can end your task. And if you just don't want to run the Video Maker anymore, you just hit like that and it exits out of it. You want to close out the market easily enough. You can hit to exit all, and it'll close out all the applications. You can also check out what you what you have downloaded and. You can uninstall the pre-installed applications from AT&T, so you don't want the Family Maps Live TV or the Code Scanner. You just hit uninstall, brings you through the uninstall process. Just as simple as that, and it's right off the phone. And it's all—it's pretty much for all the um, pre-installed software here. Check out the RAM. You have 837 megabytes of RAM for applications. 305 is available right now, but you can also hit clear memory, and it'll clear out whatever is in the background. And you, and you st pretty much start off with 254 megabytes to that's our, that's being used currently with the phone. Storage, you get to see here how the 16 gigabytes is pretty much split up. You have um, system storage, which pretty much is where your applications will install. You have uh, about 1.97 gigabytes available for that. For USB storage, SD card storage, pretty much where the rest of it's being split up as far as inbuilt storage is 11.36 gigabytes. And then right here for SD card storage, when you plug in an SD card, you'll see that pop up there. Okay. We'll um, go ahead and check out some of the cool applications that they've added on to, such as the voice command, which is pretty nice. And you can tap to speak. We'll go ahead and confirm, finish, go through that a little bit. And it's pretty much works what you've seen before. And we go to, we can hit tap to speak. And we can talk a command if we want to. And we'll tap to cancel. But we'll, what we'll also do here is we'll go open up the voice one. We can grab the application here. Should just be voice, it's not voice, or oh, voice to talk rather. Hit back one there. Hi Galaxy. What would you like to do? Send a text to David Johnson. What's up man? Send text message to David Johnson Jr. Message what's up man? Say send, cancel, or speak your message again. Cancel. Okay, canceled. 
you can see there, you, all you need is Six High Galaxy, you can do in driving mode, navigate, have it play a memo, have it play some music, all that type of stuff there. Really nice and really useful feature there. All right, other things that we have here, we also have a photo editor available too. It's pretty cool. You can select a picture and um, we'll just do one of the pictures that we did in the screen capture that I took here. See, we can edit that if we want to. We'll rotate it here to the side. And you can edit that as you want. If you want to um, crop it, you can. Choose where you where you want to crop it to. So you get there, there, and hit done if you want to crop. That point, you can add little special effects, radical blur if you want to. Show directions, you kind of get the idea there. It's a pretty nice little photo editor to add, to add some special effects to the pictures that you take. Okay, and that was a screenshot that I took with that, and to do that, I showed you showed you before. It's pretty much the same in all the Galaxy phones as you hold the home and power at the same time and let it go at the same time. There you go. And it takes the picture there. I hit the volume button by accident, but you kind of get the idea there. And the uh, next thing we'll show you here is the video editor. It's pretty cool. Head okay, on over to that. If I can find it here. Video maker, rather. You can see the video maker here. We create a new video, and you can use it on some different templates if you want to. If you want to base it off of a movie, we can do that. We can ha apply the movie effect, and we can add some clips here. So we just drag and drop um, some video files here. You can also add some pictures as well too. So if you want to add some pictures here to the timeline, just add it just like that. Anywhere you want to put it. If this music you want to you can add music as well too. You can take new pictures, new pictures, a new video, and instantly import it into here. And then when you hit, when you're done with it, you just hit done, hit play. It adds a little bit of sound, a little effect. It adds the transitions automatically. Pretty nice there to be able to just do that right, right then and there. And now you can choose, you can choose this trim, split, add transitions and stuff like that with it. And once you're pretty much done. You can uh, export the movie, and the movie will export into 720p. Even though you record in 1080p on here, it can only export out to 720p. Nice features, nice software there. I'll quickly show you some gaming as well too. So we'll um, open up the QWERTY game. I like to use that game because it's compatible with everything. So I'll show you how the gaming is here on the 4.3 inch screen. So loading up there. Nice, sharp, vivid colors. Go ahead and start a game. Play real quick there. Play the first level. You can see it's loading up pretty fast too. The 1.2 GHz Samsung Exynos processor. It's really nice. Alright. So I get through this first level. But you kind of get the idea on how gaming kind of works on it. You can see how good the graphics look, sounds good, and it plays relatively smooth there, as you can see. Go ahead and head back home here. We'll also show you some cool, neat features inside the web browser. I know a lot of people I do do browser tests, and we'll do that one real quickly here for you. We will, um, I'll show you how this works to tilt in just a second. We'll head over to uh, Board at Works website, give him a little bit of a shout out. You can see here the different options of the keyboards as well too. I put it work there. That's the standard keyboard there. There's another keyboard that we can I'll show you in just a moment. It's up here. Head over to his page as it loads up. Pretty cool there. And meanwhile, while it's loading up, I'll actually show you the other the other keyboards. You have that one there. You can also yeah, edit text may have to go through settings. No, nope, go back here. Alright. Input method there. You have the Android keyboard available too. And you also have swipe as well. Available there too. Hit back there and you can swipe along if you want to. So I guess that's what fun guy there. But you get the idea. One of the cool things about the, the browser is, is is not only does it have really good pinch and zoom and renders pages pretty fast, pretty well, 
for the standard Android browser. And it does support flash as well too. So you can do a couple of cool zoom tricks. So rotate it here to the side. And if you hold two fingers down, you can see right there, you can zoom in and out that way. Pretty cool. You can also do that in pictures too. A little, little fancy feature people like to see. And also has some cool animations with the window. So you want to add a new window, you can add another one. We'll add another new window if we want to. And you can kind of go between the windows like that. Nice nice little added touches here from the standard Android uh, browser. Go back here. Kind of get the idea there. All right. Quickly show you some video as well too. Open up the YouTube application, show you some streaming videos, which most people are going to be watching stuff on YouTube. Let's see if we can just grab a random video here. And we'll use Raven Johnson's Broken Goat. Give you an idea. Hey, what's up guys? Put, put it to high quality. Turn out the volume just a bit here. But you get the idea, sort of the video quality here on the Galaxy S2 with definitely with the uh, Super AMOLED Plus display. Pretty nice there. I'll skip that a little bit and see. Show you how it looks. Another cool thing with um, Android here and extend the touch widget UI, you can rearrange your icons or widgets as you want to. If you hold the icon there, you can actually use the gyroscope to kind of slide down this the center here. Slide down there. You can add it there if you want to, and you can move it accordingly as you want to. Just simply drop it there just like that. You can also resize widgets as well too. Show you how to do that. Hide a widget, drop it down in the same position. You see the little yellow boxes come around it and you can resize it to small or as long as you want it to be. Tap on the screen again and there's your resize widget. You can also add widgets. Just hold desktop, hit widgets and you can add different ones here if you want to. Plenty of different widgets to choose from. Let's say you want to add mini, wall, mini paper. We'll add that to there. We can also resize that too. Drop it right there, we can push all the way out to there if we want to. And you're done right there. Pretty cool way to add widgets and you can remove it just as simply as that. So you can add, edit, and resize the widgets as you want to. Another thing we'll check out here is email. If you're not using the uh, standard email application, Gmail or anything like that, you can use this email client and it's pretty much a standard view. But if you rotate it here into landscape mode, you get sort of this nice little outlook view. It's pretty cool for email and you get full HTML uh, email right here on the on the side where the email is viewed and you can just kind of scroll up and down between your emails it gives it a nice little outlook view like I said before pretty nice feature there Samsung also has included its media hub applications you have the social hub and you have the media hub as well too social hub is pretty cool adds all your feeds and messages all into one little section here and you can kind of scroll through you can thumbs up retweet do all the same functionality that you would see in the sustainable applications but now you can just go to one place for it head on back here show you the media hub which we might have to update yeah, it's going to ask to update the media all right now i have the media hub updated new little icon there we'll open that up i should open it up twice there we'll put it up there and you can see you have movies tv shows and stuff that you can either own rent you can watch a preview of as well too and you can download it right here to the device or you can download to other different media hub uh, media hub um, app, media pub approved devices as well too from Samsung and a pretty cool thing is you can watch it on here you can also watch it on your TV if you do purchase the optional HDMI cable you can plug it right in there and watch on your TV in full HD too pretty cool kinda get the idea there and that's pretty much it in terms of software for the Galaxy S2 here for at and the uh, battery life, which I'll show you here, is it's okay. It runs at about uh, 11 hours or so of battery life that I experienced with it, between 11 to 12 hours. Not as long as the Epic 4G Touch, but it does have a bit of a bigger battery. But um, you, you, if you're a power user, you're pretty much going to get through the day on a single charge pretty well. If you're moderate user, you probably be able to go to about a day and a half. Another thing I want to show you to try to extend that battery a little bit longer, you can use the power saving mode here. When you activate that, you can have it turn on at different percentages. Uh, with where your battery's at and it'll turn off different functionality, different radios, handle brightness and screen timeouts and stuff like that. I think that's a really nice user feature to push the battery a little bit further. Another thing I seem to forgot to show you here is you can see the notifications. Pretty much what we've seen in all Galaxy S uh, devices on TouchWiz devices. You have your quick access icons right up there and then you have your notifications right here that you can individually go through. 
But um, that's pretty much it there for the Samsung Galaxy S2 as far as software and hardware is concerned. So let me give you my final thoughts on it. To simply put it, the Galaxy S2 on AT&T is the best Android phone on their network with good battery life, great screen, great overall design, the sleek, very well polished software, overall just a great experience with it. If you're on AT&T's network and you're looking to get an Android phone or you're looking to, to, to get an alternative to the iPhone or something like that, definitely the AT&T Galaxy S2 is the best phone on AT&T's network for Android and the best alternative to an I, I, iPhone if you don't want an iOS device. So this is Bowman here from BW1.com, reminding you to subscribe to our YouTube page, follow us on Twitter, become a fan of our Facebook fan page, also check out our written review, the link to that and all social media is in the description, and always remember to live your tech world in high definition.